everybody let's jump right in we're gonna talk about the top 16 decks from the recent biggest star wars uh event really that has happened since the release which happened about two three weeks ago star wars unlimited is being gaining a huge amount of popularity london made a big event 200 uh, over 200 players went and played i'm not gonna lie guys the competition was not as big as i i wanted it to be a lot of mistakes were being made in the early rounds of course it got better and better throughout the later rounds but it just felt like a lot of people were still learning the game so take the results of this tournament with a grain of salt uh, people were just excited with the with the with the actual ip and they just wanted to test out their decks maybe these are not the actual best decks but they're really good to look at we still want to have to uh, we still have to actually look at the biggest tournaments in the game right now and look at the meta and see what's performing. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to jump right in, guys, to top 16. Number 16 was a Boba Fett, guys. We're going to look at this Boba Fett and talk to you about it. As you can see, um, it's an ECL Boba Fett with running the Greedos. I saw uh, this lineup is probably going to be a solidified lineup for all the Boba Fetts. Yeah, you can put, mess around with the short troopers. Maybe you add two, you can go to three, maybe you can go down to one. But this lineup all the way till the Steadfast Battalion, if you can keep this lineup in your Boba Fett, uh, it seems extremely strong. And I bet you guys we're going to see a lot more of these, uh, this full lineup right here of units, exactly the same lineup of threes. Uh, just like I said, with the distinction of the how many number of short troopers you're going to run. But we're going to see this lineup a lot in a lot of Boba Fetts. Uh, also, we also see some Bosks here, so this is really interesting, but I do want to talk about these, uh, the actual cards that we're looking at from the event side. We are looking at Resupply, we are looking at Traitorous, so Boba Fett's still running Traitorous, guys, because in the mirror match, it's best. This is the best card in the mirror match. Also, against uh, a lot of these aggressive decks, you can take out a lot of their momentum, especially against Sabine. She gives you a lot of upgrades to some of these small units, and you can steal them. Shoot first is huge. Surprise strike is huge. I see him a Boba Fett win game with this. Waylay is huge. Uh, sh shoving down back and home run or freaking uh, devastator, whatever it is. It's insane. And then overwhelming barrage wins games. Guys, we're going to see a lot more of these decks. So I would suggest you guys keep an eye on these decks. And. Uh, Let's move on. That was number 16. Now we got number 15, Darth Vader. I'm very interested in this Darth Vader with the ECL. Let's look at this. He is running the Vipers at 3, the cell blocks at 3. He is running the Short Troopers at 3. Uh, this is something that we usually don't see Darth Vader doing. Let's look at his lineup of space. This is very interesting. I did notice that you, you as a Darth Vader do not need to play a lot of space units. Um... But he is running the Ruthless Raider at 3. I honestly don't believe you even need this. It's nice to have, of course. But sometimes you don't even need this. Let's look at his events. Uh, of course, the lineup of the Darth Vader and Palpatine. Also, there is no Reinforcement Walkers. Very interesting. Just dump the Reinforcement Walkers out. Uh, because I know Reinforcement Walkers are really good against uh, like mirror matches. And against other late game decks. But if you just assume that everybody's Boba Fett makes sense. Why you would not run uh, Reinforcement Walkers. It's just you're, it's just something you're not going to be playing at all. Y yeah it's true. They're very strong in the mirror match. But they're very weak against Boba Fett. And other aggressive decks. So let's move on here guys. We got Force Throws. Force Chokes. Open Fires. Overwhelming Barrage. Vader's Lightsaber. And Traitorous. And the resupply. So Traitorous is the only one at two. Everything else is at three. Makes sense, by the way, guys. The Vader's lightsaber. This is a force deck. This is a force Vader. So what he does is he can reliably, every single turn seven, use a force throw, pull out a Vader's lightsaber, and pull out uh, and, and, and just do so much work in turn seven in terms of disrupting the opponent. So this is a very strong deck, guys. Turn 7, he does so much disruption. Very good list. I'm actually very, very happy with this list. The only things I'm looking at, maybe you guys can switch out as well. Maybe you don't need are the Vader's lightsabers, the Shore Troopers, and the Ruthless Raiders. I just don't, I don't even think you need Ruthless Raiders. I think your Imperial Interceptors do all the work for you in space. And Ruthless Raiders are nice to play, but uh, can also slow you down heavy. 
But yeah, guys, that's just my opinion. You guys uh, take it with a grain of salt. Let's move on, guys. We got number four, uh, 13, no, 14. Here, another Darth Vader, Lord of the Th Sith. Let's see the difference here. This one's the command center, no ECLs. And is running the TIE lens. He's running Admiral Moti. When defeated, what does he do? I'm actually not sure what he does at all. But this is a very interesting deck, a much more aggressive deck than the other Vader. We're also see, seeing the Vader's lightsaber here, just that plus three removal of um, of uh, anything, deal four damage to a ground, it's just so big and you can do this so consistently because you are Vader. Uh, and you're also running the Darth Vader, so it makes sense that you run the Vader's lightsabers. I know a lot of people just don't like the lightsabers, so, but yeah, this is a very, very good deck, uh, very good uh, card. He's running the Force Lightnings as well. Only two Star Vipers. Like I said, guys, uh, you're going to see a lot less uh, of these uh, air units, space units. Basically, it's going to be Imperial, two, three Imperial Scepter, three Ruthless, or it's going to be three Consortium Star Vipers or three Imperial Scepters. You're probably going to see a, just the removal or basically just six, six space units uh, is enough. You're just doing so much damage and you can spread it so widely with the Palpatine, with the... Uh, with the overwhelming barrage, the open fires, the force chokes, there's just so much. Well, I guess force choke cannot hit space, but you just, with the Imperial Inceptors, you're just doing so much damage everywhere that, uh, and also with your Darth Vader, that it's just, you're not scared of, of being, uh, of, of your opponent going into space. It just really doesn't hurt you. Also, we see a Seventh Sister, so you can still be successful with the Seventh Sister. But yeah, guys, really interesting deck. Let's move on. Number 13 here. Another Leia. This one is a Leia. We did not see Leia yet. The Tanky Town. Leia, we did check out the Tank Town Leia in the finals. Go check out the finals, uh, our, our stream over this. Uh, basically, we, we uploaded some videos and they were the match Leia versus Aiden. Really strong uh, Aiden matchup for her. I think this is actually the deck that we were looking at. Really strong deck, guys. Running the red Tank Town allows you to slow down the opponent. If he's aggressive, you can slow down their big, big units like Sabine or some of these big units that gain... Uh, uh, much more uh, power ups like red threes or black reds uh, so it's very very good to do you also are running for a cause i believe in so you're very aggressive your layers are doing so much damage uh echo base defender can really help you and you can pull it out with u-wings but you're not running u-wings apparently admiral akbar only at one so it's just very 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 non necessary, which is very interesting because I would assume this is a very necessary card, especially against other aggressive decks or maybe mirror matches where you can uh, build up a board. But uh, very interesting. Uh, but yeah, Rebel Assault Heal as well. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, Metal Ceremony, really strong uh, deck, very, very similar to Sabine, just doing so much damage so quickly. Get inspired, guys. This is the Leia that you should be performing and getting inspired by. And let's move on, guys. Number 12, we have a Boba Fett. Let's see the similarities, as I said, lined out for you guys. You're going to switch out just the short trooper, but besides that, it's a pretty uh, similar lineup to the other one we saw. Uh, this one's running three Bosks on only two Steadfasts. And also, let's see the differences here. Only one Traitorous and one Change of Heart, which is big. Uh, but the other deck didn't even run any Change of Hearts. So as you can see, the, the, the higher... The higher uh, ranking you get in Boba Fett, the more you see a uh, change of hearts. So maybe this is a necessary deck card in the deck. And you can actually m mess around with it. You could either... I really like what he did here. Maybe he went for a side deck of two, uh, one change of heart, one traitors. That way, if he's playing against aggressive deck, he can add the traitors over the change of heart. But if he's playing against uh, control decks, he can add the change of heart over the traitors. Really, really good uh, idea there. But yeah, moving on, guys. We are going to see Palpatine here. Very excited with this deck. A yellow Palpatine. We're going to probably uh, play this deck in our stream uh, in two days. Because tomorrow is Pokemon Day. But in two days, we're going to do another stream. And we'll probably play this deck, guys. You need to show up and you need to play with us. But yeah, guys... Uh, Greedo at three, really strong early game presence. Oh my god, so much early game potential. And uh, then you get the, you also get the Boba Fett, which is huge. You also get the Bosks, 
You also get to play the Darth Vader's and the De Devastators, which is usually we something we see in the side deck. So it's very interesting that we just see him dropping that in the middle of the deck. And then he runs No Good to Me Dead, Asteroid Sanctuary, Sneak Attacks, Waylay, Resupplies, Overwhelming Barrage, Change of Heart, and Traitors. So he is running both Change of Heart and Traitors. That's probably something... Uh, why, this is probably why he did so good is he was able to run traitors and change of heart another reason why uh, Boba is so strong is he is able to run these two cards which is insane just taking a lot of momentum out of the basically pulling the rug out of your opponent's uh, <laughs> under your opponent's feet so very nice moving on guys I then guys these are amazing decks you have to get inspired by them but let's move on I then red really strong destroys Leia with all the healing I then heal so much that Sabine just cannot catch up. We also see him running in trench, which is big. In trench, just uh, forces Sabine to have huge units that can do nothing. <laughs> You're also running three super laser blasts, three bombing runs, and three vanquishes, three vigilance, three takedown, uh, and one make an opening. And also the uh, open fire, the th uh, three, the three power of the dark side, and only one no good to me dead absolutely insane absolutely amazing really like this control deck so many cards uh, he actually utilizes vigilance as well at three absolutely insane guys wow this is a very very unique deck we're not going to see a lot of these items looking like this so i'm very excited to see this but wow guys very very happy to see He's actually running repair as well. He notices that his healing is not enough against some aggressive decks. He needs more. Also runs more Centennials. Not just the cell block. He's running his own Cloud City Wing Guard. And also the System Patrol. But wow. Very strong deck guys. A lot of events. And a lot of control. Interested in your opinions about this deck. Uh, moving on guys. We got a couple more. This is going to be a Grand Inquisitor deck. Let's look at the Grand Inquisitor. Grand Inquisitor really uh, basically plays this whole game around the squat, Scout Bike Pursuer uh, because you can do some damage on the Scout bike, bike Pursuer and then just do so much, uh, especially with your own ability, you you deal damage to your own Scout Bike Pursuer and it just gets stronger and you're ready it and then it can attack again, it stays, just pushes so much power out. So let's look at the deck, uh, Guardian of the Wills. Uh, Wolves, Admiral, Ozel, so maybe getting rid of Saboteurs. Uh, saboteurs are really important, looks like, in this deck. It has a lot of Saboteurs. Uh, the Death Troopers, the Fifth Brothers, the Cell Blocks, the Blaze Malbus. What does he do? A Grit. And if you have uh, some kind, I think it's six resources, he gets Centennial. So another Centennial as well. Uh, Imperial Interceptors, the System Patrol, another Centennial. Seventh Sister, the Saboteur, Rugged Survivors, so another Grit. Ruthless Raider, uh, just to control some of the space. Force throws, really strong. I guess he has some force units, yeah, like the Seven Sisters and the Wolves. And the Fifth Brother. Uh, he also is a force, very, very good. Also, you're probably going to see a Fallen Lightsaber or the Darth Vader's Lightsaber. But yeah, obviously, if attached unit is a force unit against on attack, deal one damage to each ground unit the defending player controls. Very, very strong, gives him plus, th plus three, plus three is huge. And he can start uh, putting some wide amounts of damage onto the board. Really nice idea there, guys. Keep fighting radio unit with three or less power. And it binds all things. Heal up to three damage from a unit. If you control a force, you may deal that much damage to another unit. Wow. So, yeah. Really interesting deck, guys. I'm interested in your opinions. This is very inspiring to see. You can run a shielded Grand Inquisitor. To shield the scout bike and keep it pumping insane amounts of damage and keep restanding it. You can also shield your rugged survivors after you put some damage on them. Really interesting idea, guys. Uh, yeah, let's move on. We have Boba Fett again. Here he is. Greedo, Cartel Spacer, Viper Probe, Droid, Crafty Smuggler, the Boba Fetts. Um, here's Bosk, Steadfast Battalions. Uh, Darth Vader, shoot first. Yeah, another Boba Fett. Nothing special, really. Oh, we're looking at the sideboards. Well, we can look at sideboards later. I'm not interested in sideboards, really. But yeah, only two waylays there, so nothing special. Now this is all gonna just be a, a lineup of Boba Fetts, guys. Um, so, to be honest with you, 
We're just gonna look at some interesting Boba Fett's like this yellow yellow Boba Fett running the two Cantina Bouncers, the three Cantina Bouncers. Wow, he's also running a Frontier ATRT. Absolutely amazing. Gives the, gives the ambush if you control a vehicle unit. So he can get a lot of damage out very quickly. Wow, very good ideas. Uh, this is a deck I've never seen before. Allow, uh, he can also run this cunning event. And I guess he just runs more of these uh, yellow units for his uh, side deck. But yeah, surprise attack at three, everything at three. Very interesting idea. Just black, yellow does so well. Um, but yeah, guys, let's just look at the last two Boba Fett's. Look at the differences between them. Top two Boba Fett's. Another yellow Boba Fett. This one is actually snapshot re reflexes. Uh, is also running the Cunnings. Is also running anything else? No, only the Cunnings. Wow. And then a bunch of space units to control space. Very, very interesting. And then finally... Got the final big boss, the final Boba Fett here. Uh, ECL Boba Fett trumps everything else with the one traitor. This is all he needs. Only two shoot first. But look how amazing it is. Honestly, this uh, yellow green lineup of events is so nice. It looks so amazing. Vipers, I've been calling this out for a while. I've noticed this. You really don't need to run three Vipers, guys. Uh, one or two Vipers is enough. Sometimes you don't even need the Vipers, really. But as you can see, maybe for the ECL, if you're running ECL, it's nice to have at least two. But yeah, besides that, you really don't need them. Because late game, you never like to play the Vipers. But yeah, guys, another amazing deck. This one's also running Reinforcement Walkers. So his late game is crazy. And he does he does much better against late game uh, and controlling characters and leaders than anything else. Yeah, that's it, guys. That's the top 16. Interested in your opinions. What's your favorite deck? What's What deck are you going to play? I'm really happy looking at those Darth Vader's, really confirmed a lot of my ideas about Darth Vader, that force throw is something necessary. Now, I still don't like the lightsabers, but maybe I need to start testing them and see how they go. But yeah, guys, interested in your opinions and get inspired, grow. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you like. I'm going to do insane amounts of content for Star Wars. It's all competitive like this, content nobody's done before, finals. We're going to shout guys finals, top 16s. We're going to keep track of all the big decks and yeah, so make sure you guys uh, stay with us on the, on the journey and subscribe and like.